Good evening. Welcome to SBG Television News for Tuesday, August 26th. I'm Jimmy Prince with the details. In the news tonight, telecommunications provider Lime has announced a 1.05 billion U.S. dollar program for the Caribbean, dubbed Project Marin, with 6 million U.S. dollars allotted specifically for upgrades in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Speaking to members of the media yesterday, Lime's Caribbean Chief Executive Officer Martin Roos says persons can look forward to major upgrades and enhancements from Lime over the next 12 months and an inc incredible smartphone experience on the company's 4G mobile network. And uh, as Vincentians will, will know already from the past, we have uh, the far better coverage in the island group and we um, aim to replicate that in our 4G experience. Uh, we have also been driving around and doing lots of speed tests to ensure that the end user, you really can use the applications be it Facebook, Twitter, or YouTube, or video, what have you, and then really draw the benefits of advanced and fast mobile communications. Roos says of the $6 million allotted for St. Vincent and the Grenadines, $3 million will go towards upgrading broadband speeds across the country. And uh, whilst we, uh, within a very short uh, time frame, will be able to up speeds to a 20 meg uh, speed, we will, after the upgrade is complete, somewhere around Christmas time frame, be delivering uh, 50 megabits of, 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 of speeds to those who, who desire so. Uh. Meanwhile, the Lime Caribbean CEO says in early 2015, it is the company's plan to officially introduce to Vincentians IP high-definition television. So as you can see, the Kevin Wireless is is um, applying a fourfold uh, strategy where we will not only um, invest in services that you might have known us for in the past, but also go beyond that. So we shall aim, aim to be the market leader in mobile, in broadband, in business-to-business -business communication services, as well as bring high-definition television to this market. And all of that underpinned with a one billion US dollar commitment in, of, for, for investing in the networks that we will do the coming three years into the Caribbean. While well, there are fears among some North Windward residents of the potential security risk associated with the temporary replacement of the mental health facility at Orange Hill, Area Representative Montgomery Daniel is of the view that residents can assist in ensuring that there are no security breaches at the facility. Daniel told residents at last Saturday's town hall meeting that the responsibility is theirs to report any unusual sightings in and around the compound to hospital staff. You are living around and they have been domiciled here. I'm sure you can always report if you see any anything that is unusual. I'm sure you can report to those who are in command at the site of anything that you see that you are not too sure about. It will also help in terms of the overall management and control of the patients at that site. Senior Magistrate Rishon Brown Matthias is concerned over an incident that occurred at the Kingstown Magistrates Court last Thursday when former High Court Registrar Tamara Gibson Max appeared in court on the three charges. Brown Matthias told law enforcement officers who were present in court after the incident that she was surprised to have seen a journalist entering the court with a video camera and was not stopped by security officers. According to the magistrate, she is very upset over the matter and called upon police officers to be more vigilant in the courtroom. She also went on to indicate that there might have been a breach of the law and that she would be reporting the matter to the Commissioner of Police. A Camden Park family is seeking the help of the public in building a home. Since fire destroyed their home back in June, life has not been easy for Dolita Diamond and her family. Diamond, her husband, the two daughters, and the two young grandchildren have been calling the community center the Camden, in the Camden Park area their home in the weeks following the fire. But with no running water, electricity, indoor plumbing, and a leaky roof, conditions there have been anything but comfortable for the family. Diamond further stated that they face another challenge in that they may have to vacate their makeshift home as work is expected to commence on the community center soon. However, Diamond said that her family does not have anywhere to go. 
But it's fully. Because if they had any center here, any center is leaking. And but we still have to cope until we get a help to build back where we live in. I have to go by the river and bathe. And I get some water for drink from the neighbor. My cousins right above the road. Yeah. Musty Care is now flying for breast cancer awareness and research. More stories on the local scene when we come back. Welcome back. Mustik Airways is now flying for breast cancer awareness and the research. The airline has partnered with the Sunnybrook Hospital in Canada and the SBG Medical Association in branding one of its aircraft to bring awareness to the cause. Operations Manager at Mustik Airways, Marcus Dabrell, says a percentage of the revenue gained will be donated to research and to persons diagnosed with cancer. Simple examination treatment Exam just a simple examination for the cancer. Um, however, this would be going through strictly through Dr. Ambrose because she would she would be the one to identify the persons who are less fortunate and who would need the assistance from us. This fund, these funds would not be available until the next two years because it's going to be a two-year drive for Mystic Airways, and the aircraft, as you can see here. It would just be used as a flying billboard to promote the awareness of breast cancer in St. Vincent and the Grenadines and in the Caribbean because we fly as far as San Juan in the north to Caracas in the south. So every airport that this aircraft goes into, people will be amazed and we hope that this would send a positive impact to every one of those islands, uh, making people more, more aware of uh, the effects of a silent killer breast cancer to the less fortunate people of the Caribbean. President of the SVG Medical Association, Dr. Rosalind Ambrose, says the association is very excited about the initiative. We first saw this aircraft on Facebook and um, we uh, tracked it down to see what was happening, what was the schedule for the launching and what involvement that Mustique Airways would like to have in the issue of breast cancer awareness. Because I think most people know in St. Vincent and the Grenadines that the Medical Association host a series of events in October, which is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, including our Pink Cap City Walk, where the Medical Association will raise funds by selling the pink caps. And now we have other things, t-shirts, um, dog tags, and a number of little um, insignia uh, articles, including our lapel pin. And these funds that we raise, we use them for assisting women who have to go abroad for breast cancer treatment. Meanwhile, Dr. Ambrose says it is the association's hope that more airlines will come on board with the initiative. I absolutely love that aircraft. I was thinking when um, Mr. Dabriel was speaking, and I wonder if the other bigger airlines could now take this billboard and next year do something like that. Just one aircraft from a fleet of hundreds that many of the big airlines have. I think it will be a very good step forward, and maybe we'll encourage some of our partners in North America um, to encourage the airlines to do something like this. It's a wonderful aircraft. Congratulations, Mr. Palmer. In other news, universal secondary education should not be interpreted to mean just a place at a secondary school. That's the view of the president of the SVG Teachers Union, Oswald Robinson. He was speaking on Hits Talk last Sunday on the issue of universal access to secondary education and how successful the initiative has been. Robinson said the initiative should not just be about meeting the needs of the age group who should enter secondary school. It should mean quality education provided by suitable qualified teachers to every child of every sector, every age group, regardless of the ability, the means, the race, or the creed. And this goal will not be achieved if teachers are not trained to function with ease in different situations and with different types of learners. And as we talk about quality education, it's not only the teacher in the classroom. That is an important factor, but we have to look at all stakeholders. We have to look at the learner, we have to look at the physical environment, we have to look at the resources, we have to look at all the support mechanisms or structures which have a part to play in the issue of quality education. The Central Water and the Storage Authority has awarded four full-time scholarships to children of its employees for their secondary and A-level studies. The scholarship recipients include Anthony Billing, 
Rodika Grant, Dorian Archibald, and Teresa Stapleton. Three other students were awarded bursaries. They include Kyron Pla, Kashima Simmons, and Kellyanne Murray. Speaking at the award ceremony, CWSA's Human Resource Manager, Yvette Daniel, told the students that they are now about to embark on another chapter in their educational pursuits, which they should prepare to embrace. And that chapter is your secondary school education. Now I want you to know that you can achieve whatever you set out to achieve. You did not place first in the common entrance, not common entrance, the CPE a exam, but I don't mean to say that the person who came first, that they are better than you. You can do whatever that person set out to do. Because you too, we know, you have the talent and you have the potential to do anything that you set out to do. People encourage the students never to be afraid to ask for help. At work, if I can do something or if I don't understand something, I'll go and I will discuss it with my manager. We have the acting general manager here present with us this afternoon, Mr. Brian De Silva. So you too, you have to find somebody who will be able to assist you. It could be a teacher, could be your mother, your father, could be friend, grandmother. Find somebody who you think will be able to assist you. And don't be afraid to ask questions. If when you are struggling, when you are discouraged, and you feel like people have given up on you, I'm asking you, please, don't give up on yourself. Well, as the number of extension students who studied in Cuba grows, 396 thus far, the call is now being made for a more vibrant Vincent Cuban organization in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Speaking at the recent send-off event for seven additional students to Cuba this, ac this academic year, featured speaker Radio Batiste says it is extremely important that the students return home and share with locals the Cuban experience. I want when you come back because I'm very disappointed that um, some students who come back, we should have a much more vibrant organization in this event. With over 300 people having had the opportunity to study and live in Cuba for six years, we should have a much better organization in St. Vincent. I know sometimes people think, oh, there she goes again talking about Cuba. Well, I have to speak about Cuba because when you are given an opportunity, it is your obligation and responsibility to share about that opportunity that you have received. Because it didn't, you know, it didn't just come like that. Other people made a sacrifice so that I could have that opportunity. And you must appreciate sacrifice. Because I have seen in my experience persons who were critical about Cuba's contribution to the national development of St. Vincent and Grenadines when the chips were down to the ground. The only other place you could have turned to was ask the government to send you to Cuba. A total of 95 youths here received certificates of participation, having completed the five-week-long Royal St. Vincent and the Grenadines Police Band Summer Program. In providing an overview of the program, Bandmaster Inspector Haynes says the 7th Police Summer Camp commenced on July 22nd and ran through August 22nd. He said that the students participated in a series of activities. Our students have been trained by this program over the years. Some of them are now playing in church groups, school groups, and in steel orchestras throughout the island. During the first peer week of this program, the students were taught how to hold the instruments, how to take care of the instruments, and how to produce a song or a note on the instrument. In three days, a student produced a tune, started with a tune in three days. The tune was more than broken, and this was amazing and encouraging to the tutors. Inspector Haynes described the 2014 summer program as a great success. Who did not learn very much on the cause of their own 
interested music and to the program. The program was not only about music. Lectures were done by Susan Sarden Simmons on child trafficking, Corporal Angela Byron from the DARE program who did substance abuse, Mrs. Nanta, a counselor, and Father Nichols, Jacqueline, and made their contributions. Meanwhile, Assistant Commissioner of Police Frankie Joseph says the summer program was geared specifically at involving the youths in creative activities. The Royal St. Vincent and the Grenadines Police Force stages the largest youth program in the whole of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, with over 1,000 children and youth being actively involved in the police band, the St. Vincent and the Grenadines Coast Guard, the Police Youth Clubs, and the Pan Against, Against Crime Committee summer programs. You are fortunate to be a beneficiary of such programs, and I would like to encourage you to grasp such a golden opportunity with both hands.